He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk. And laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew, like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Let's get cooking. Holiday edition of Cooking Corner with Giuseppe Crimi Broly. Today for you, we're going to be making Christmas cannolis. Now when you're making cannolis, you're really making two different things. You're making cannoli filling and you're making cannoli shells. For the filling, you're going to need the following. You're going to need mini semi-sweet chocolate chips. You're going to need powdered sugar. You're going to need whole milk regatta cheese. And you're going to need vanilla extract. Now for the shells, you're gonna need the following. You're gonna need some eggs, you're gonna need sugar and salt, you're gonna need flour and oil for frying, and you're gonna need white wine and softened butter. It's important that your butter is softened, so make sure you take it out in advance. Now in terms of hardware for cannoli, you're gonna need the following. And pay attention, because there's a couple of weird ones. You're gonna need a pair of scissors. You're gonna need a gallon-sized Ziploc bag. You're going to need an electric mixer. You're going to need paper towels. You're going to need cannoli rolls. You can get these on Amazon for like 10 bucks, I think. You need these. These are very important. This is how you shape your cannoli shells. You're going to need cheesecloth. You can get this in most supermarkets. You're going to use this to drain your regatta. You're going to need various measuring spoons and cups, all different sizes. You're going to need a rubber spatula. You're going to need some tongs. You're going to need a bowl and a rolling pin. And you're going to need two large mixing bowls. As always, folks, step number one is going to be wash your hands. Go ahead. Turn your water on, moisten your mix. Once your hands are nice and wet, put some soap on them. Two squirts is my preference. Rub it all around, get in between the fingers on the back of the hands, get the knuckles, get under the fingertips. Take them back under the water, rub them all around. Wash all that soap off. Once you're convinced your hands have been sufficiently clean, you're gonna need yourself a little towel. Dry your hands, and we're ready to cook. So step number two is gonna be make the dough for your shells. Now what you're gonna to need to do is add one and three quarters cup of flour to your mixing bowl. Now you're gonna to need to add a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, and one and a half tablespoons of sugar. Now using a fork, just mix all those ingredients together. The next thing you're gonna add to your dough is three tablespoons of butter. Now, in order to do this, we have to cut it up into small little squares and then cut it into the dough. Now to cut something into dough, you're gonna need two knives. And you'll add it to the dough and then drag the knives through it like that. I'll show you how to do it in a close up now. Now that you've seen how to do it, you can add your butter and cut it in. The final ingredients for your dough are going to be one egg and one third cup of Marsala wine. If you don't have Marsala wine, any white wine should do. Go ahead and add those to your dough now. Now 
Once they're added, take your fork and mix it all up until it's fully combined. Sometimes it's better to just mix it with your hands. So go ahead and get your hands in there if you feel like it's necessary. Now when you're finished, your dough should look a little something like this. If it doesn't, if it's a little more dry, you could add an extra tablespoon of wine to bring it all together. Once your dough is done, what you're gonna do is grab some cling wrap and push it down inside the bowl and let this sit for 30 minutes. Go ahead, grab some cling wrap. Put it over your dough. Press it around it inside of the bowl and let this sit for 30 minutes while you make your filling. Now that our dough is resting, it's time to move on to step number three. And step number three is gonna be make your cannoli filling. Now, the base for your cannoli filling is gonna be four cups of whole milk regatta cheese. So how to prepare this is simple. You're gonna open your regatta cheese, and then you're gonna take your regatta and spoon it into some cheesecloth. Now, cheesecloth is like a thin mesh. So when you spoon it into the cheesecloth, make sure you've got a lot of extra so you can pull it up over around the regatta and pull the moisture out. I'll show you. Go ahead and spoon your regatta out. And then grab your cheesecloth and pull it up over the sides. Once your cheese is bound up in your cheesecloth, gently apply pressure and moisture should start coming out. You know you're done when not a lot of moisture is coming out anymore. Maybe a drip every couple seconds. Once you've gotten most of the moisture out of your regatta, you can just add that to your bowl. Now that your regatta is in your bowl and devoid of moisture, you can add one teaspoon of vanilla and one and a half cups of powdered sugar and then mix it together with an electric mixer. Once you've got your powdered sugar and your vanilla in your bowl with your regatta, it's time to use your electric mixer to mix it up. Now only mix it until it's combined. Make sure not to overmix it. Now that your filling is made, it's time to add the chocolate chips. What you're gonna need to do is add one half cup of mini semi-sweet chocolate chips. Go ahead. Pour those out. And then you can add those to your filling and use your mixer to mix it up. Now that your filling is all made, it's time to cover it with cling wrap and stick it in the fridge for 30 to 45 minutes while we shape and fry our shells. Moving on to step number four. And step number four is gonna be shape your dough. Now, our dough has been sitting for about a half hour while we made our filling. So what we're gonna do now is put flour all over this counter and use this rolling pin to roll our dough paper thin. Go ahead, unwrap your dough. Put flour on your countertop. Spread it out. Grab your dough. Roll it in the flour. Now have yourself a little snowball fight. Now split your dough in half. And only work with half of it at a time. You've got half of your dough covered in flour. Take your rolling pin and start rolling it thin.
You want it to be an even thickness all the way through. Once you've gotten your dough to the desired thickness, grab a bowl or a margarita glass or something with a circular top and make sure it's between four and five inches. Then take your bowl, dip it in the flour, and use it to cut out circles in your dough. Just like that. Do that for your entire first half of your dough and the entire second half of your dough. Once you've cut out as many circles as you can, you can grab all your dough, ball it up, re-roll it, and cut some more circles out. After all that rolling and cutting, we ended up with 14 shells. So now it's time to move on to step number five, which is gonna be frying your shells. Now you're gonna need a whole bunch of stuff for this step, so let's go over it. You're gonna need your oil for frying. You're gonna need a deep pan to fry your shells in. You're gonna need your cannoli ring to wrap your shell around and fry it in. You're gonna need one egg beaten in a bowl. This is called an egg wash. How it works is, once you wrap the shell around the ring, you put the egg wash on the seam to seal it so it fries and doesn't open up. You need tongs, unless you wanna stick your fingers in hot oil. You need a measuring cup to measure out your oil. You need a plate with a paper towel on it to take your shells out of the oil and let the excess oil drain off before taking them off of the ring and putting them on your second plate. And finally, you're gonna need some way to measure the heat of the oil. Now, here in the Crimmy Verley household, we have a heat gun, which tells me the temperature of whatever I'm pointing it at. But you could use a thermometer or just guess, the popcorn method. The popcorn method. If you don't have a heat gun or a thermometer or any other way to test if the oil is done, what you can do is take a popcorn kernel and drop it in. And as soon as it pops, your oil is going to be at temperature. So, now that our oil is hanging nice and evenly at around 350 degrees, it's time to actually start frying our shells. What you're going to need to do is grab your cannoli ring, grab a shell, wrap the shell around the ring, like so, and then where the shell ends, you're going to take your finger and add a little bit of egg. And you can take your tongue, grab your ring, and dunk it in the oil. You'll fry it for about a minute and a half to two minutes before taking it out. It should be a light golden brown. All right, our cannoli shell has been in the oil for about two minutes and it's turned a lovely golden brown color. So we're gonna take it out and put it on this paper towel to let it cool. Make sure to get the excess oil out of the tube and leave it there to cool. Once it's cool, we'll slide the shell off the ring and transfer it to the second plate. Now while you have more rings, I recommend only frying two shells at a time. That way you don't overcrowd your oil you don't overcrowd your plates. All right, our cannoli shell on the ring has had a little bit of time to cool, so it's time to take it off and put it on the separate plate. I recommend using a towel for this step so you don't burn yourself. I grab the ring with the tongs and the cannoli with the towel and just slide it off. And put it on the plate 
Let the ring cool a little bit before trying to fry another shell on it. Alright everyone, our cannoli shells are fried and our filling is cold, which means it's time for step number six. And step number six is going to be fill your cannoli shells. Now I'm working under the assumption that most of you don't own piping bags, so I'm going to show you how to pipe them with just a Ziploc and some scissors. So, what you're going to need is a large Ziploc bag, I've chosen gallon, some scissors to cut a hole in your bag, and a rubber spatula to scoop your mix into your bag. So, go ahead and start filling your bag with your filling. Once you've got a decent amount of your filling in your bag, zip it almost all the way closed, and then push a whole bunch of the air out of it. Once you've done that, seal your bag. Now, hold your bag diagonally. No, that's not right. Ready? Now, hold your bag at an angle. No, what is it? What is this? It's not sideways. This is sideways. Pick your bag up and hold it askew such that the corner is pointing straight down. Then, squeeze as much of the filling towards that corner as you can. Now that all your filling is towards the one corner of your bag, what you're going to do is take your scissors and cut off just a little bit of the end of that bag. Just like that. Now, you've made yourself a homemade piping bag. Using your homemade piping bag, what you're going to do, grab your cannoli, stick the piping bag in, and squeeze it gently Now that our cannolis are filled, it's time for the final step, which is going to be plating. To plate cannolis, it's very simple. Put them on a plate and top them with some powdered sugar. Just like white snow on a Christmas morning. That concludes this week's episode of Christmas Cooking Corner with Giuseppe Creamy Rolli. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the recipe. I certainly know I did. If you liked this video, leave a like below. If there's something you want to see on the show, leave it in the comments and I'll try and make it for you. Thank you for tuning in to this special Christmas episode and I hope you have a happy holidays. And you can get rid of your cheesecloth. You gonna wash it and use it again? I wish. <laughs> the family cheesecloth passed I'd, down from generations. I'd say the killing on cheesecloths. <laughs> this was my grandma's cheesecloth. <laughs> Woven out of her hair back in the 16th century.